Okay, <laughs> we're all here. Um, quickly, we'll make a motion to approve the minutes of December 9th. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Approved. Hannah is joining us tonight and then she's going to a selectman's meeting. So we're going to have her talk to us first. Uh, have you all met Hannah Davis? Hi, everyone. I talked to Hannah on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many other people have. Um, I think I've met some, but not all. No, uh, Andrew Ostrowski. And Hi, on the Andrew. phone is Doug Caldwell. Hi, Hi Doug. Everyone. Hi. Doug is Doug is on the Ag Commission and Andrew is on the Conservation Commission. Awesome. Nice. Well, it's great to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. So we're going to talk a little bit about Hurley Park, um, park accessibility and some safety improvements that they want to do down there. Yes. The price, the price tag is sixty thousand three hundred and twenty-three dollars. Yes. Go ahead, Anna. Tell us a little bit about it. Totally. Um, so the town of Waitley has recently been awarded the um, Park Grant, P-A-R-C, that's short for Parkland Acquisitions and Renovations for Communities. Um, those funds have been awarded for um, rehabilitating Harley Park so that it's um, more accessible um, and wheelchair friendly. Um, to that end, we are requesting that the CPC allocate, uh, like Al said, uh, $60,323 for this purpose. Um, 15,000 for design purposes in fiscal year 22, and then the rest in fiscal year 23 uh, <clears throat> for the rest of the project, excuse me. Um, I am happy to answer any questions um, as they may arise, um, but that's the really quick <laughs> explanation. How much is the park grant for Hannah? Um, $122,911. Okay. And this includes the design and the construction? Yes. How soon were you planning on getting the design done? So we've spoken with Terry Reynolds and he's expressed that he would be willing to do the design for us. We don't have, um, uh, really strict timeline yet, but um, the designs need to be finished by this June. By June? Mm -hmm. I've suggested maybe that some of it could come out of the administrative expense budget because that should include design work. That's oh, true, that's an eligible. Yeah, yeah, you said like 15,000, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it would seem reasonable to me that at this point in the year and given the number of projects we have that we might dedicate five or six thousand from the administrative expense fund. I've spoken with Brian Domina too about the timeline um, and he said that that would work. He gave his endorsement for that. Well just make it clear to me if you get five thousand dollars now and you mm -hmm. have to wait until town meeting to get the rest of it does that work? Yeah, I mean, all town meeting is at the end of April, um, so Sometimes. we can. Yeah, we hope. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're aiming for. Okay. Um, so Terry can do however much work um, we have the funds allocated for until then, and then if we get the rest of it afterwards, he can keep going. So with the five thousand, like, give you maybe intact design plans? Would that be reasonable? Um, I don't know that um, the five thousand will give us enough for intact design plans. Um, I think we need to speak more with Terry Reynolds before we have a really specific scope of work, but um, it'll at least get us started for sure. That's good, yeah. Um, I don't know who Terry Reynolds is. Uh, he used to be on the Conservation Commission. He's a private uh, uh, engineer. He does a lot of just engineering work that deals with like wetlands issues and any like issues that need engineering plans okay. for. Okay, thank you. So he's he lived thanks. in the Barron's house before they did. Yep. Okay, I'll leave that out of the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's recorded. So um, the other the other thing that would do is is maybe make some of the cash flow issues a little easier if we decide to pay down the 
the rest of the town hall debt because there's that much less that has to come out of the fund balance. Well, I, I, this, this, I, I think it's a good this, idea because it's consistent with the way we've funded some other projects in town. Yeah. I mean, this would be at least the third time that we've I can think of two others, and I'm probably missing yeah. some where we've yeah. advanced some design money out of out of our administration. Well, that's, that's what it's there for. So yeah. Right. Right. Well, there's um, nine thousand dollars in the administration. Eight thousand four hundred. Oh yeah, we we paid for the call. Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. So I think you're right. Six thousand dollar figure would probably be okay. Just talking out loud. Just talking out loud. <clears throat> I have a. Do you want to vote? I have a different question. Do you want to vote on no, Shudi's no, recommendation no, beforehand? No, we'll, we can vote on all this after. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, my question is that uh, I was looking. I don't know when the when JD Ross provided the bid. Um, I can't. It's probably it's probably says no. Actually, I I don't know because it's not dated. Um, for a project of this size, we'd be required to put the project out for bid, right? Um, it's, I, it's usually ten thousand dollars or more. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how? What's our level of confidence that the bid would hold? That this will be the cost, given what's happening with with project costs. I think that this is a relatively reasonable expectation for um, what this project will cost in general. Would there be parts of the project you could cut if you had to? I'm looking um, at. Um, I don't think so. This project has already been accepted for funding by Park um, in its entirety. Okay. I believe that the expectation is that we fulfill those um, requirements. Okay. okay. They did say on NPR this morning that construction costs have peaked, so maybe maybe they're right. I heard that too. Hope so. Any other questions for Hannah or about the Hurley Park project? Only for my own personal info, since I've mostly been absent during the pandemic, but was the committee in the loop about this application as it went out and that there would be ex expectations that we would be providing this support in conjunction with the park funds or was that? I think something? we were brought into a loop a yeah. prior to the town meeting because they had already figured yep. out that at the uh, they were going how to much it was for town yeah. meeting and yep. we we're going to do it now. So that's when we, I would say that'd be last, last early spring, last fall. Early last, last fall. fall. Oh, fall, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We had a special town meeting last fall. Yep. I think, okay. I think by then they had already secured the park grant because yes. they already had the numbers lined up. Yeah, okay. Right. So sometimes <laughs> bidders will put in their contracts um, that they'll only hold their quote for a certain number of days. And so that then I'm guessing this might be more than 90 days old already. Someone might want to just double check that there's no sort of expiration date on his, his project, just from a procedural standpoint. That's all. Good call. That's a good point. Could you check on that, Hannah? I just call JD and make sure that these numbers are good. And I guess I don't know who you use. Who you use it, it, yeah. And if you guys started with a contract when you did the bid process, you may may already have the paperwork in the, the same way that the, the award came. Like you probably had bid docs to submit to the park grant from whenever it went in. So you might even have like however long the, the price was right, right in the paperwork. Just yeah. to not have to go back. That's all. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be happy to look into that for sure. Cool. We're a committee that doesn't like surprises too much. I think it's true. We <laughs> plan fair. really hard to try to avoid them, but they always come anyway, despite right. our best efforts, yeah. right? That makes a lot of That's sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. personally, I think this is a great project that's going mm. to really enhance Hurley Park. So super exciting. Yeah, it is. That's you. If that's it for Hannah, we'll let her go. I know she's got another meeting to go well, to. We'll let her sit. She can stay and hear she the can vote. Stay as long she as oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be about it. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs>
All right, we're going to move on to the Snowmobile Club request for uh, ATV. Um, I talked to Stuart Segnor and they cannot do this. We cannot do this. And yeah, there's a whole. It's yeah, considered Judy had a to, to maintain trails and and maintenance is not allowed. Did they do a GoFundMe? Fund I don't think they have. I don't think. I think they're just no. It's a very. I mean, I know they haven't, but but. I don't think yeah, they mostly have. they rely on. Uh, I think membership fees is what they're making. I'm just sort thinking that that this is the sort of thing that people would probably be willing to pitch in on if they had a way to do it. And hmm. um, I talked to the president when we when I after I talked to Stuart and he understood totally. I, I felt bad for getting his hopes yeah. up to begin with. Yeah, I. I just feel bad because like, it's such a good thing, but yeah, it, it yeah. is. I, I and and did you? Um, I'm for, I've forgotten his name. So well, did you? Um, did you ask him, Alan, whether they've already applied for the state grant they were hoping they to have. receive? I don't believe uh, they I mean, have. I I what? wonder if uh, I don't know how urgent their need is, but I wonder if we could work with them in any way to help them put together a proposal that would be eligible. Um, I'll check on oh, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't have a clear idea of how that would be the case, but I, right. I think it, it is a good, it's, it's something that we would want to help. <laughs> I, I did make it clear that we do have an off cycle round and if they needed money before the next season to fix trails, do bridges, bridges are are eligible. A natural me. kind of thing. Right, right. That there'd be more and willing we'd be more than willing to have them apply on the off cycle so i think they got other things other than the atv i think that might have been if they could everything fell together they'd get it but they also have a whole bunch of bridges they need fixing and repairing and building so i think we'll see with them again in june you know pay for engineering studies the, the one on the on the swamp off north street here it's it's the engineering study that's so cripplingly expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they, even the one they did between um, Christian Lane and Swamp Road, just that little pathway I know was really crippling for them. Just to get the, they had to get engineering plans for that to yeah. pass through for the conservation commission. That took up like ninety percent of their budget, and they just <laughs> all they had to do was help mm -hmm. for volunteer work to put it all together. You know. Yeah, and they they call it one of the most expensive bridges in Whitley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, that's that's exactly that what might be eclipsed that. soon. Yeah, <laughs> and that's soon. I'm thinking in about three years, Donna. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Better get used to it. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the cemetery improvements. They are asking for thirteen thousand five hundred and thirty dollars for fixing fences around East Whateley. Senator Whateley and West Whateley cemeteries. Anybody have any thoughts or comments on this? Well, I think I wrote to you that the Historical Commission voted at its meeting to um, in favor of the historic preservation parts of the proposal. Um, I, I know that Darcy and Neil have spoken with, is it Chris Williams who chairs recreation it now? Is. And have had positive conversations. I don't think they've met yet. I think, I think uh, this is now secondhand that they are, and, and Jonathan isn't here. I think they are meeting later in January and we'll put it on the agenda then. Okay. Yeah, pretty straightforward project. It is. Perhaps we could approve it provisionally subject to the recreation department's approval. Yeah, we can do it all next meeting. Okay. We'll do them all next meeting. By then, Han will be back with us, hopefully, and say the numbers are good, and we can vote on that one, too. Okay. All right. Done with the projects. Let's talk about prepaying. You, you're excused, Tana. <laughs> Thank it you. was really great to meet you all. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thank you Thank for coming, you. Anna. Thank Hope you. to see you next meeting. We'll let you know when it is.
That sounds great. Thank you. Right. Bye. Well, she might have wanted to stay for that too, Judy. The town hall. Yeah. She, she's our grant writer now, right? Is that what she does? At I'm um, planning. She's helping she's, the planning. She's, she's helping the planning board. She she sits on the ZBA meetings, land use and grants. I think is, okay. is so she's she's did some research for the resource replacement fee, the fee that the latest bylaw revision put in on this new solar bylaws going in where they'd have to pay a fee for the land they take out that would go into the open space fund. She worked on that. She's, she's very good. good. As you could tell. And she lives in town, which I, I, hadn't, I hadn't known. She lives oh. on Long Plain Road. Oh, nice. I mean, we, we she was the first one <laughs> to sign in, so we had a conversation. Um, town hall pay down. We owe after the forty three thousand that we've already voted. One hundred sixteen. It's essentially one hundred and sixty thousand. Yep. But forty three of it we were counting on anyways. Yep. And so it's one hundred and seventeen that's left. Um, could you um, just uh, refresh my memory? I, I thought when we uh, asked about this either last year or the year before about paying down early, I thought Lynn, this is, this is uh, I'm trying to remember what you reported, Judy, about your conversation with Lynn. I thought we heard back from Lynn that there were some practical obstacles to refund. We had, we had asked if we paid more more than the 43. Uh-huh. We were asking but about not the full amount. I remember, I remember that. Okay. Done the, yeah. And, and she right. was uncomfortable about making the outstanding amounts too small because she said she was afraid it would be hard to find people to bid on it. That's right. I'm sorry. I, 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 I just forgot the details. Yeah. So. So. I, I can tell you she would be very happy to have it go away. <laughs> very happy. Why? It's kind of a pain for her to go through the repayment. It's not, I don't think she's entirely comfortable going through this yeah. borrowing process because it's a different kind of note than she deals with normally. Right. right. Yeah. Well, you want to talk about the finances just a little bit? Make sure that we are kind of comfortable doing this if we decide to do this. I'm looking at Judy's handout. I don't know if the rest of you guys have that in front of you. But she's saying that. Um, well, do you guys got all the stuff in front of you? I'm still pulling it up, but I'm getting there. I, I remember I just have to find it. Can you share it, Donna? Uh, not without taking. Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I've only I've only mastered sharing if I bring the things up before we start Zoom. Okay. <laughs> no All right. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, there it is. Okay, I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. Well, you're getting there. The the. Yeah. The budgeted reserve and the CPA fund balance are where the 117 would have to come from. Mm -hmm. And if I did my math right, they total about 185,000, just short of that. Mm -hmm. So if we took 117 out of it, there'd be basically $68,000 left. That's money that we can spend this year. The fund balance is sitting there in hand. Um, the budgeted reserve is coming in over the course of the year, but it's it's on schedule and slightly ahead of schedule, according to Dara. So of the projects we have, 
with the 6,000, and if it goes, Hannah wanted 15,000 out of fiscal year 22. If there's 6,000 taken out of that, that's 9,000. And the cemetery project would be another 13,500. So that's like 22,500. And there would be, what did I say? 60. 68. 68. Left. So there's there's plenty of margin, and I don't think there would even be a cash flow problem. It's all good news. Yeah. yeah I don't see any. I don't think there's any other big projects that are coming up. I don't think there's any APRs or anything on the, the horizon. Well, there. Like you know, once we once we swing into fiscal year twenty three, then we've got next year's allocations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, we'll have and, yeah. and we have another one hundred and eighty thousand. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, plus that the July first. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about the same thing, Andrew. About are there any really large projects coming down the pike? And I mean, if something came from housing, mm -hmm. you know, that would be. I, I'm Catherine. You know, we would I'm, be so happy if something I'm came from housing. Completely sympathetic. I'm completely <laughs> right. sympathetic. Um, more than well, probably as much as you know. But, um, but there's there's the housing trust as well as the and, right exactly and the, and there is we another hundred thousand yeah. in the hundred thousand which has yeah. grown I yeah, assume. So let's say yeah if we got the funds yeah. now let's do it. You know we really lucked out with low interest rates on this. Mm. That, right. I mean we projected it would take ten years to pay off and we and this would be the interest five. rates were lower and we had more money but. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it makes sense partly because it's it's a low volume application year and there aren't any big projects looming. Yeah. yeah, there's something to be said for being able to eliminate the thought of having an outstanding debt cost as you go forward to look at what new projects come up, right? Because yeah. it's now what yeah. we can, oh, yeah. right? Tie that down, wrap it up and have yeah. a clean- Regardless of the interest rate, getting rid of debt, getting rid of that- Yeah. Problem. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. So you don't yeah, know I'm trying to think right? about downsides, but yeah. you know, it's a big surprise that would just come in June as opposed to December. But mm. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't seem likely. You know, if we have a big surprise, we can always borrow again. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I I was I was that was next on my list that. You know, we we now know that we can do this, and we know how to do it, and we wouldn't do it lightly. But right. no, yeah, something like an APR can wait sometimes a year, mm. or get a bridge loan from somebody like Kestrel or Franklin Trust. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Loan, exactly. You don't know of um, any APRs, Doug? No, I. Uh, I, I haven't heard any uh, rumblings about anything, you know, in the pipeline. Okay. And we're only paying 5% of those anyway. Right. These days. Right. Yep. All right. This is something you guys want to vote on now. You want to do it next meeting. We better do it now because we're going to need to have a public hearing and get a special town meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll I think them. we need a public hearing. We certainly need a special town meeting. Yeah, for mm -hmm. projects and everything. Yep. Yeah, all projects I think you have to have. Right. Well, yeah. I think. Well, this isn't really a project. I don't know. Whether... The project. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, yeah. Brian anyway, we, we can find That's that right. Out. It's a Brian yeah. question. All right. We'll make a motion, somebody. Uh, I move that we um, pay down the outstanding town hall debt in full. I second. <laughs> Sounds good. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Unanimous. All right. Let's start talking about the 10% policy limit on projects involving real estate. Um, Doug gave us a good history of why we were at 5% on APRs 
And I'm just going to read a little thing that came out. It's in our CPC plan. Uh, the committee has determined that CPA funds used for a portion of the purchase of an agricultural preservation restriction may not exceed 10% of the value of the APR, nor a maximum of $50,000 to any individual farm or farmer and one CPA revenue cycle. It is expected that most APRs funded will be substantially below the $50,000 figure. And the reason I bring that up is that is the only, APR is the only thing we applied the 10% limit on. We have not applied it to conservation restrictions or any of the other um, possible real estate interests. Uh, whether, uh, historic preservation, affordable housing restrictions. So I'm not sure we need to do anything. If, other than unless, I'm, I'm fine with it being 5% for APR. Uh, we've right. done what we need to do to get to the 5%. And it's not costing the APR any more money. Either. Well, is there a problem? I mean, do we need to have it in the plan? Because it kind of looks discriminatory. Well, well, because I remember when we, why we did this is we looked back yeah. at a couple of years of APRs when we first started this and somewhere 17%, somewhere 21%, somewhere yep. 8%. And we said, well, we this doesn't seem very fair. Mm. So I think that's why we came up with the 10% and that's what we were paying. That's what the state was asking at that time. Yeah. And we said, okay, we can't do well, any would, more. I, I think I may know less about how APRs work than most of, or all of the rest of you. Um, could one of you just tell me how the total cost is set and then how the state portion and our portion work? Sure, I'll refer to Doug on this. Yeah, I mean, you know, the nuts and bolts of it are that uh, the difference in value between the land as it's used in agriculture and, and it, you know, how it could be used for construction is figured and that's sort of the, the, the money they try to get to the landowner. And currently, uh, you know, we APRs that come out of Waitley can request 95% uh, of that difference from the state. And then, you know, a, a, the, the local match or, um, or whatever you want to call it makes up the remaining 5%. So what we are I mean, doing five can be what made we're, up. Is, sorry, go ahead. Well, that and that five percent. I mean, that can be made up by the landowner accepting ninety-five percent of that value. That, that's what I. So, so really, what we're doing is making the landowner whole, based on well, the landowners ba yeah. based on a sort of a formulaic approach, <laughs> right? To, right to what he's he or she to what they are giving up which is the right to develop the land yeah okay thanks yeah. now one thing donna we mostly do state financed aprs but i mean occasionally people do them on their own like bill o'bear but he essentially gave gave his local, his whole well, that's, that's share. A conservation I think that was a restriction. He's doing a uh, conservation okay. restriction. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. the same thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but it's possible, but yeah. yeah. Right, right, I know, right, exactly. And, and, and um, Douchy down the street uh, took a bargain sale. He took a reduced value. Yeah, yeah. yeah. as yeah. did John. Well, okay. So what's people thinking about the 10% <laughs> leave it the way it is. And when it comes to conservation restrictions or historic preservation restrictions or affordable housing restrictions, we can put on any percentage that we want. We can vote anything we want. Just keep the APR at the 10%, even though usually we only pay the five, but the 10% will give us a little bit of leeway, I guess. I don't know why we need the leeway, but. Yeah. Just leave well off the law. We're, we're only talking about situations in 
in these four categories in which cash would be transferred to an individual owner, to, to the current owners. Is that true? Well, where cash is transferred, cash is used to buy what they call a real property interest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is and either to buy the property or to buy the restriction. Right. And we haven't yet had any of those in any of the other three categories because in the well, case conservation of the restriction, yes. Well, but in the case of the wait lease, yeah, I it's suppose actually so. Question. Wait, right. I, I'm, 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 yes, I'm, I'm familiar with the project. I, I'm, I'm thinking out loud that it was slightly different because the ownership transferred from Douchy to the Kestrel Land Trust, but I guess functionally it's the same. Yeah, that was sort yes. of confusing because they right. need to have an owner of the property. So the town couldn't be the owner, but Kestrel right. could be the owner. Right. So it was a trade off that they, it was sort of a one situation. We, have rights to the property, but they're the owner. It's that sort of- Yeah, but Mr. Dotsy got the money. Yeah, it, and then he got the money. <laughs> Let me bring up this scenario. Say there's a tobacco barn in town that the historical society would really love to own. They came to the CPA for $80,000 to buy the barn. That would qualify for this type of transaction, right, Judy? Mm -hmm. Now, if we said the 10%, then they're only gonna get eight thousand dollars from us. But if we leave things alone, we can give them the whole eighty thousand. Yeah. Well, no, I'd things? go the other way. I'd take it off the APR. Take take what off? Go down to five. The ten percent limit off. So I don't think it's it, it's doing anything, and it well, creates a an imbalance. I think with the other types of properties. And if we, just to play it out for a moment, if we did that, given the state's current funding at 95%, we probably wouldn't run into that unless for some reason there were an APR that was not, that did not receive the state support, right? Right. <laughs> that sounds right. But I'm, again, yeah. it's just, but no, know. I... I'm right following with you. I, that's where my understanding mm -hmm. lies. So there's not a huge today. Well, like, like I think change. even Doug said, even if they don't get the 95%, it's like they get what maximum about 80 even percent is the lower limit. I think you, I was reading on that. Or it used to be. Yeah, 80 is kind of the baseline without yeah. uh, down uh, participation. Mm -hmm. And what do, what do, um, how are APRs funded in towns that haven't voted the CPA? Before we had the CPA, uh, they were funded by contributions from land trusts and private donations. Mm -hmm. So okay. the, the property across from the Wheatley Woods mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. was all done with, oh, yep, yep, uh, I think right. Franklin Land Trust and, and donations. Right, right, and the one the one dug on your on your property um, precedes CPA funding too, isn't it? It's quite old. We used to have something uh, called Waitley Land Preservation that actually raised money for APRs and conservation restrictions in Waitley in conjunction with Franklin Land Trust, and that kind of fell apart right around the time the CPA started. Although I don't think there was any direct connection. Yeah. Again, my memory of doing the 10% was because when we first started the CPA, there was a slew of APRs and we were yeah. all over the place mm -hmm. with, the, yeah. with the local and, maps. And we, I think I put it in the memo, um, we were concerned that they'd stopped looking for other sources. You know, exactly. there'd been all these other sources before and all of a sudden they all dried up as soon as the exactly. CPA came. Right. Mm -hmm. So let me ask this question. This paragraph in the plan twofold: the ten percent of the APR value and fifty thousand dollars per year to any individual farmer. Farmer, that part I think I still like. Maybe want to increase it, but I think there should be a cap. I, I, I I'm not sure it ever be that much. I don't. Know. 5%? Well, 50,000 50, is kind of a million, bucks, a million. Right? 
What's that? Yeah. And I just uh, saying the same thing you did, Alan. You know, that's that's assuming a million dollars is on the table, right? Mm -hmm. Unless unless North Farm puts itself into an APR, and <laughs> and I don't I don't even know if that would you know. Mm. Uh, uh, I mean, the other way to manage this which is somewhere between Judy and Alan's position <laughs> is, to, is to say uh, within this committee that we're, that we will monitor any grant application of this sort against our previous practice and that take as part of our responsibility to make sure that we're not being inconsistent in what we, um, in what we provide or what we recommend to the town. That I means five years, five that years means, from now, we're not going to remember that. Yeah, I, no, I was just going to say that takes more work, and it's and it's not, it's not a clean cut limitation. And there's no there's no way you can apply the limit to an affordable housing project. Period. I don't think. Right. You can apply what? To affordable housing, there's you you couldn't have a ten percent limit practically. Oh, no, no. Well, but Alan, no hasn't, Alan hasn't. You haven't proposed extending no, the current no, restrictions. No. Sorry to the cat. Um, no, 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 I think that should be wide open. Yeah, I think, well, I think we all do, but I just okay. And the ten percent that was applied to the APR, we can probably get rid of. I think the question I have is, do we get rid of the $50,000 maximum per year? And it's only per year. I think we did that is so one APR doesn't wipe out our piggy bank. Mm. Uh, we could yes. have for other projects. Yeah, that still makes sense. Yeah. So Should we, we apply leave? it to conservation? Well, to the others too? No. Nope. We probably should. <laughs> Again, it's tricky because if we actually get to the kind of regular housing project that I would have been used to in my prior job working with, those are not $1 million projects. Those are $5 million projects. Yeah. And if we were going to come here for money, we would be asking for more than 10% potentially. Like we'd be asking for a one time really big amount. And so having well, any, an, anything percent, you do is going to be more than 10%. So yeah, it's going to, there's, the, and the state doesn't fund. Yeah. So worth more than $50,000. Yeah, if more than 50, if we get a real, the, right. again, my right. data is getting older by the day, but um, the way the state has funded things, they tend to never, ever, ever take, provide enough funding for a project to do it without securing some substantial resources in other places. And mm -hmm. it 10, 10, 50,000 might not be enough to supplement yeah. I don't think anybody's proposing a fifty thousand limit. On no. Right. Well, no, but I think what maybe the the extension of Alan's points, like, well, what if we're keeping this for one bucket? Should we be considering it for other buckets? Right? Is that like in terms right, of the exactly. equity of the so with regulation? the property, Castro? We did sixty thousand. Right. We already went over the limit if we applied it that way. Right. So maybe we get rid of it all. What's the chances of it getting a million dollar? And if we do get a million dollar APR. It's going to be for a whole boatload of land, and we may really want to deeply consider it if it's for sixty thousand dollars. Well, that's what I that's why I was thinking about the farms in town, and right. I, I mean, you know better than I, Alan, what the biggest farms would be worth. Um, you know, do I have no idea? Mm -hmm. well, I think the biggest um, one that I've seen is the. Used to, well, I don't know if it's pot farm still or not. The one on Christian Lane there, that was the one that was like 1.2 million or something. That was the only one that was up for grabs, but yeah. Oh, that well, there was Doesn't just a... hmm? oh, what do you think about getting rid of it all? The whole paragraph, shall I read it again? Yeah, the 10 percent and the fifty thousand dollar cap. Yeah, if we're yeah, so we're not secluding one part like i said make it equal for all all parts yep. i would do that this is in the plan under category specific criteria yeah subparagraph open space and right. again it says the committee has determined 
the CPA funds used for a portion of the purchase of an APR may not exceed 10% of the value of the APR, nor $50,000 to any individual, individual farm or farmer in one annual CPA cycle. It is expected that most APR projects funded will be substantially below the $50,000 figure. I make a motion we get rid of that whole paragraph. Hmm. Second. Okay. Any more discussion? Nope. All in favor? No. Say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Passed unanimously. Judy, could you mark up the new plan for us, please? Yeah. I, I guess the other question I have is, have we decided to move to the third Wednesday, or do I need to change the... <laughs> yeah. Can I... I'll just comment on that. The, my potential problem with Wednesday is it looks like we just assigned the third Wednesday as a staff meeting. Today's <laughs> staff meeting, literally it happened at some point in the in December. And uh, let me think about this. Every other staff meeting is gonna be at a time frame that would contradict with this meeting. So I'll, I'll in fact, I'm doing the presentation in February on our budget at the next staff meeting, which I was just told today by one person that that would be from five to 6.30. Although earlier we talked about making it from three to 4.30, but like, it's gonna be, I'm gonna be having a monthly staff meeting either three to 4.30, which then I could be here for five or five to 6.30, in which case I would miss the whole meeting. And it, but I at least so, could be here every so, other time. So does yeah. that mean you're free on, two, on the second Wednesday? It does. It was really just about this third Wednesday. Yes. We were doing so, the second Wednesday before, right? I just missed and you got initial. here. You got here at five o'clock. So if we did sec we'll move back to second Wednesdays. Pardon and me. starting at five, then Jonathan. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan, I don't think any Wednesday, Jonathan Jonathan is gonna have troubles. Right. I mean but I could do and, any and, other and Wednesday this, at five for easier. Okay, well, but if you can do second Wednesdays, and Jonathan is going to be problematic. Sometimes have to be Wednesday. Maybe we should stick to second Wednesdays, and I'll change the wording in the yeah in yep. the plan too. But that's the other when the, when the project the other weighty question I had for the evening. <laughs> so you change when the project proposals are due. Which will be the Tuesday before the, the second, Tuesday before the second Wednesday. Second Wednesday. <laughs> I hate reading these sentences. It's easy to say them, but it's really hard to then later look at them and figure out what it means, right? I'm like a Donna trying to get this all down for the minutes. I'm not. I, I'm not even. I, I'm moving to action item minutes. I give up. <laughs> well, I mean, we're recording we you. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how a simpler way to say it. Yeah, it's oh, no, it's true. The whole, the, the whole APR I mean, what, thing what we discuss we need to do pros and cons. To date every time for some poor people and put mm. right, that. right. So, so have we agreed to return to stay with the second Wednesday of the month? At least so. have, are we still? <laughs> Doug, you good with it? Yeah, it's fine with me. All right. Back to second Tuesday at five. Okay. Great. Okay, so that's February 9th. Yep. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now we don't have to approve the updated plan because we already approved the changes to the plan, right? Right. 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 Yeah. So I'll get it up. All right. Um, We'll talk to Brian Domina. The draft, everybody had a chance to read the draft annual report that Judy wrote up? Mm -hmm. Happy? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks. Yep. Thank you for everything. And I think that's all we need. We need to talk to Brian about if we need a public hearing for the town hall pay down. Otherwise, we just need a special. I'll be down in town offices tomorrow. I'll check with them. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that's, it. that's all I got, folks. Anybody else got anything? Nope. All right. Stay warm. It's going to be in the 20s for the next seven days. <laughs> Woo, whole 20. <laughs> At best. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Donna, for hosting. Sure. I know. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs> okay. Bye.